Apple just bought a new design software. This is called Pixelmator Pro. Now, Pixelmator is only 50 buckaroos. That is far cheaper than Adobe's egregious subscription pricing. And it combines basically Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator into one program. So in this video, we're gonna see what Apple was thinking when they bought it. And we're gonna find out if it's a true competitor to Adobe, and if it's worth your 50 bucks. We're gonna see what features Pixelmator might have that Adobe's missing, and maybe what features Adobe has that Pixelmator is missing. So let's just start by opening Photoshop, opening Pixelmator, and making the same design in both softwares to see how they compare. This is Photoshop, and this is Pixelmator. So you might notice they kind of look the same, but they kind of look different. Overall, the concept of the UI is about the same. You got a toolbar on the side, property panels over here, you got menus on the top, same thing over here, you got things going on all around the screen, and then you got a big canvas in the middle. On this canvas today, we are going to be designing something you've already seen. We are gonna make the thumbnail for this video. So whatever you clicked on that picture of me and the icons, we're gonna design it right now, live, in front of you, through this video to compare Photoshop and Pixelmator. I normally use Photoshop. I've been using Pixelmator for about last two weeks now. I just keep deleting the free trial and then reinstalling it. You shouldn't do, you shouldn't do that. I've liked it a lot. I very much enjoy Pixelmator. Let's start by just taking a few photos for the thumbnail. Um, nobody's ever really watched me do this before, but here we are. Peace. One of the big, big differences between Photoshop and Pixelmator. I have never tried to put a video into Photoshop and I can pull the still from the video right out of Pixelmator. Wow, I did not know you could put a video into Photoshop. It's definitely taking a lot longer. Not my scratch discs are full now. Okay, oh, and, and it's gone. Well, that was a fail, but Pixelmator worked and I think we're gonna pull our still from the video using Pixelmator and then put it into Photoshop. So let's pick the one we like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy to scrub through this video. It's pretty difficult. It's giving me like arthritis in my hands. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I like this. It shows some interest. So now that we have the thumbnail photo and it's in Photoshop, what the crap? Photoshop crashed? When did it even do that? Okay, and I'm just gonna make the whole thumbnail like I normally do and show you my process and then I'll show you Pixelmator. So just wait until that part of the video, okay? First thing I normally do is go to Camera Raw. Here's some auto adjustments. I'm gonna just bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, add some saturation, bump up this exposure a little bit, add a little sharpening to it. And overall, just try to make it pretty bright. I like the lens blur tool down here. It kind of helps provide some separation for my very busy background. I like this, these rings over here, and then you add some blur to it and boost it up. And now we have a blurry background, just like that. I usually just hit this background mask, which is pretty convenient. And I drop the exposure in the background a lot. And here's our before, our very flat image, and here's our after. Beautiful. And I'm pretty quick with this because I've made a lot of YouTube thumbnails <laughs> at this point. And you guys seem to really like Pixelmator videos. I don't know why, but my last two Pixelmator videos have just been amazing. And then I posted a a video where I used this iMac and it got literally like a hundred views. <laughs> So yeah, you like Pixelmator and I think maybe it has to do with my thumbnails or maybe the fact that I'm just randomly wearing this construction vest. So I'm just trying to keep it the same. So I've gotten pretty good at making the same thumbnail over again. This is my 1280 by 720 thumbnail canvas. And then I usually frame it about right there. A real photo editor is gonna look at my process and be like, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> and that looks good. Now I usually heavily rely on generative fill, which is where you can just kind of like make a selection and this search box pops up and you can add or remove objects using Adobe's fancy AI. Pixelmator does not have generative fill. It's not working right now for me anyways because my internet connection. So I guess it's fairest that we just don't use generative fill for this thumbnail anyways. That being said, both Pixelmator and Photoshop do have removal tools and we are gonna try to remove this camera setup right here. We're gonna try to use the spot healing brush tool here with the content aware and we're just gonna select my whole tripod and see what happens boom 
ah, I know what's going on. It's because it's reading the rest of the picture. So let's just crop this. Oh my God, could not complete your request because the scratch discs are full. I don't even know what the heck a scratch disc is. Why, what is it scratching? I'm about to scratch <laughs> your freaking disc. <laughs> this is, this is a, Oh my God, can, oh my God, the scratch discs are gonna drive me nuts. I can't move it down because my scratch discs are full. All right, now that we've fixed our scratch disc, let's see if we can try that again with a bigger selection. Boom, okay, I'll take it. And then it would be nice to get rid of my microphone as well. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. What I typically do next is I select subject down here with this handy button, and then I copy and paste me onto a separate layer, and I go into blending options and add a little outer glow to me. That looks pretty cool. Now we're just gonna drop our Pixelmator Pro logo in this hand. Then we're gonna take our Creative Cloud logo and put it in this hand. I think this needs a little bit more drop shadow. Nice. And then it needs a little bit more saturation. And that's basically what I do. I think I might try to cut out this hand real quick. And then the same thing over here. Boom! Just like that, people, we got a thumbnail. So overall, that's pretty much my process to make a thumbnail for one of these videos. It's pretty simple, but there is some cutting, some masking, some effects, but it's really not too hard. So let's try to replicate the same process in Pixelmator and see what challenges Pixelmator has or what advantages it might have. And the first advantage is right off the bat, we are actually working with the video file. As you saw, I had to pull this out of Pixelmator to even put it into Photoshop. So that's a huge advantage. While we still have this as the video, I'm gonna go to the color adjustments tab and uh, again, do the same thing I was doing in Camera Raw. And we could even play the video when I'm done if we wanted to, but I don't wanna lose my spot. Basically just gonna add some saturation and adjust my brightness and my shadows, sharpen it a little bit. There's our before and here's our after. And here's our Photoshop version. Here's this and you can see they're about the same except we haven't done the background yet. And if we were to play the video, you can see it just starts playing with all the color adjustments ready to go and I could export this as a video out of Pixelmator. And now I'm gonna duplicate my layer and I'm gonna use the handy dandy cut background button and that takes a second do, 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 do. boom you can see we have cut me out of the background and we're going to drop the exposure just like we did before now another thing we did was we blurred the background a little bit so we can do that on here too go to blur and we'll do this bokeh blur and you can choose your uh, ring amount your ring size you can't choose like the shape of the ring like we could in photoshop and you also can't choose depth of field at all. So you can see like the table is really blurry here. I mean, it's all just one blur. Whereas here, the leaves here are sharp and then the background gets progressively more blurry, just like a real camera lens. But regardless, we got it blurry and it looks just like that. So in Pixelmator, we have this repair brush. Let's just see how well it works. It's kind of circle around this camera and then boom. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't look great. <laughs> Let me try to do it again. I'll be fair, it didn't look great in Photoshop either, but the big difference is Photoshop does have generative fill, which would look great. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I think I can live with that. Now to add my outer glow, you can add an effect and you can scroll through and you see they've got lots of different fun effects. They've got sharpen, they've got colors, gradients, kaleidoscope. Let's just see what the heck that looks like. All right, let's never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> the one effect they're missing is freaking glow. I don't know why I cannot find glow in Pixelmator at all, which feels like a pretty normal effect. So a work around I found is if we take our layer, we duplicate it, we add the Gaussian blur effect. You can see how there's like a glow. And then we can go to our color adjustments, do color monochrome and make it white. And we can just lower the intensity a little bit. And then we have our white glow around me. Kind of a work around. Feels like a simple thing, but yeah, it doesn't have glow. Hey, it's $50, okay? It's $50, $50. I can live with Gaussian Blur as glow for $50. But at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna take all of our layers and I'm gonna copy them and paste them into my thumbnail 
thing again and then resize them to fit into the actual YouTube thumbnail framing. Now let's drop in the Pixelmator logo here and put it in my hand. We can scale it down to fit. I wonder how you rotate this thing because it's not popping up with the little rotate corner thing. We do have the angle right here. I guess it's not the worst thing in the world, but there we go. We rotated it. I need this Creative Cloud logo. I wonder if I can copy this and paste it from Photoshop into here. No. Here's our Creative Cloud logo. Add a little rotation to it. And that looks good. And now just like I did in Photoshop, I'm just gonna cut my thumb off a little bit. I don't really know how to do that, to be honest with you. Here's our polygonal selection tool. Oh, okay. It's not too bad. Easy peasy. Works just like how you'd expect. Okay, and there's our Photoshop version. Here's our Pixelmator version. I think this just needs a little tiny bit more saturation and then they'll be about the same. Maybe a little bit more sharpness. Oh, I forgot I need to erase my lapel. And then one feature that Pixelmator has, probably the feature that I've used the most out of Pixelmator in the last two weeks is called Super Resolution. I've been slapping this on like everything and you can see how blurry my face is. Boom, sharp. This is the image, blurry, sharp. I'm gonna really zoom in for you. Look at my eyeball. Just look right into my eyeball. Look how much sharper it gets. Look at my nose. Look at all those pixel maters right there. I love this freaking feature. It's amazing. I actually used it in my last thumbnail. I made the thumbnail in Photoshop. Then I put it in a pixel mater just for this super resolution feature. It is so nice. So here's our Photoshop file. Here's our Pixelmator file. I would say they're pretty much identical and I was able to replicate my workflow in both of these programs very easily without knowing Pixelmator that well. It was pretty easy to just pick up and make what I needed to make. If you wanna know a little bit more detail about the other tools Pixelmator has, I just posted a video that showcases the Lightroom features, the Photoshop features, the Illustrator features, and the video features. And I kinda of went into a little bit more depth into to each one of those individually than I did in this video. But overall, I mean, I think that for 50 bucks, Pixelmator could probably replace your workflow. At least it could replace my workflow. Now, if you're like a super heavy freaking graphics guy and you are really knee deep into this stuff and you need all of the comprehensive tools that Adobe has, I cannot blame you there because I'm really still hesitant to move from Adobe to Pixelmator because I know, I know there are tools in Adobe that I use that I'm just not thinking about when I'm making thumbnails that Pixelmator just doesn't have. It is limited in the tool and I found that to be true, but it's also limited in the price. So you kind of get what you pay for here. For 50 bucks, it's pretty good, especially if you're just kind of a hobbyist and you just need to make some flyers or some YouTube thumbnails or your Instagram posts. It is not a bad deal at all. My big question is for you, what features does Photoshop here have that Pixelmator doesn't that you would need? to move from Photoshop to Pixelmator. What's holding you in the Adobe ecosystem and holding you back from the Apple ecosystem? I'm very curious, so please leave a comment and let me know. Let me know if you want me to explore more with Pixelmator. If you liked this video, I've got two other videos on it. You can watch those. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be fantastic because it would really help out grow this channel. And I make videos just like this every single week on design. They're not always Pixelmator. Sometimes they're fun things like using that iMac from 1999. And sometimes they're Pixelmator if you like Pixelmator. So just stick around, just stick around. Come on in, have a cup of tea, and we're just gonna chat about design. I will see you next week with another video. Goodbye.